As you may all know, President Jokowi just met Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky in June 29, 2022, and then met the Russian President Vladimir Putin the following day, interceding between both leaders of warring countries. What does this mean for Indonesia? Is it a mere peace mission to conclude the ongoing humanitarian crisis happening in the conflict? Come, let's find out with me with Dr. Phillips J. Vermont. Apa saja misi yang harus dibawa Presiden Joko Widodo ke Ukraina dan Rusia? Rencana kunjungan Presiden Jokowi bertemu Presiden Rusia Vladimir Putin dan Presiden Ukraina Volodymyr Zelensky tentu jadi perhatian dunia di tengah konflik Rusia-Ukraina yang belum kunjung mereda. Dalam pertemuan dengan Vladimir Putin, Presiden Republik Indonesia Joko Widodo menegaskan bahwa isu perdamaian dan kemanusiaan tetap menjadi prioritas politik negara Indonesia. So here I am, everyone, with Dr. Fermonte. Uh, he's the Triple IU Dean of the Faculty of Social Sciences, uh, and today he's going to address the answers for the meeting of Jokowi to uh, Ukraine and Russia. So how are you, uh, Dr. Fermonte? I'm very good. How are you? So uh, my first question is: Have there ever been any instances where Indonesia intervened in a conflict, especially in countries that are not in the uh, Asia Pacific region? Well, <clears throat> let me start by addressing the, the term that you are using. <clears throat> intervene is a, in international relations is a strong word. Yeah. Uh, I think what Indonesia has been doing is not intervening, but rather. We are uh, actively uh, participating in okay. finding a uh, possible solution to a conflict. And then, uh, because it is mandated by our constitution that uh, Indonesia, it's in the introduction part of our constitution, that uh, Indonesia uh, will be uh, very active in <coughs> maintaining peace and security order. And uh, since then, uh, that was uh, enshrined in our 1945 constitution. And since 1945, Indonesia has been the, quite actively uh, involved in the finding solution, uh, either uh, bilaterally or through certain uh, organizations in Southeast Asia, through ASEAN, and the uh, United Nations. Indonesia is one of the largest contributors to UN peacekeeping forces. And then the, if you look at the data, Indonesia has been active in this uh, area of peacekeeping operation of the United Nations uh, since uh, late 1960s and then uh, throughout the years <coughs> up until today. So that is part of how we actually uh, finding, trying to uh, find a solution. Oh. Of course, there are uh, uh, in international relations uh, some people might argue that uh, certain countries would uh, uh, get involved in finding a solution to conflict because they have interest, uh, you know, uh, direct political interest, geopolitical interest, and so on and so forth. But uh, Indonesia has been, I think, uh, regarded uh, by, by, by some countries as a country that pursue some kind of a, uh, activism in our foreign policy. That is, uh, you know, sometimes it's not directly uh, correlated with our uh, foreign policy goals, for example. Indonesia has been active in, the, in Afghanistan. Uh, yes. You probably uh, remember yes. how, uh, including uh, President uh, Joko Widodo, Vice President Yusuf Kala, trying to <coughs> uh, gather uh, factions in Afghanistan to find uh, some kind of a long-lasting uh, uh, solution and long-lasting uh, peace in Afghanistan. It might be uh, again, uh, you know, uh, it would not be seen immediately the impact. But the fact that Indonesia is active in that area, uh, I think, uh, something that uh, we need to be uh, considering of. Okay, so. Uh there is no ulter ulterior motive but, uh, from President Jokowi to in, uh, like become the mediator between Russia and Ukraine? Oh, of course there is. I think, this is my personal opinion. Um, Indonesia is 
uh, chairman of G20 this year, and uh, we will be hosting the summit of G20. So when this um, war in Ukraine happened, uh, there are concern uh, that you know, because countries are divided. You know, yes. Some, of course, uh, condemn Russia for what it did in Ukraine, but the others <coughs> might see, uh, you know, uh, might support or may support uh, Russia uh, in this case. So there are concerns that uh, our G20 summit will not be oh. attended fully. Because Russia is part of G20, and of course, uh, some countries, uh, including the United States and others, uh, would not want to see Russia in our G20 summit. So the middle way is, you know, in order for us to have this G20 summit uh, with the participation of all members coming, then the, the middle way would be if we also invite Ukraine to come to uh, Indonesia for that G20 summit. So that way, Russia will come. But uh, also, in particular, uh, the West, uh, uh, United States, <coughs> uh, Australia, and so on, would also be coming because, in a way, we are uh, <coughs> uh, treating uh, Ukraine quite. Uh, uh, we give place for Ukraine in this G20 summit, and, and uh, maybe there will be some side meetings of various countries to talk, you know, with Ukraine, and with yes. Russia, in the G20 meeting, and so on and so forth. That is one possibility, but I think what President Jokowi is trying to save the G20 summit, yeah. that would be our direct uh, okay. national interest because okay. Indonesia is uh, the chairman of the uh, of G20 this year. But on the other hand, I think this is also uh, we have to give credit to President uh, Joko Widodo for taking uh, you know this initiative because you know uh, going to Ukraine, talking to the Ukrainian president. Uh, Zelensky, and then the, uh, right after yeah, right, right, he went right, to right, Moscow, yeah. I think uh, that is something uh, quite admirable yes. because uh, you know we need uh, you know even the conflict is as such uh, it's it's difficult, right? But uh, there is always uh, some ways to find uh, shared interest, at least yes. not to make this war uh, causing too much trouble, you know, outside Ukraine. Uh, and outside Russia, uh, Ukraine relations because we are all impacted uh, yeah. because of yeah. the war. You know, food security, uh, geopolitical security, and uh, not to mention because all countries are now uh, connected. You know, if uh, something is interrupted, it would also affect you know uh, the whole uh, relations among countries. Okay, so maybe you could enlighten us with uh, like the Indonesian relations. Uh, between Ukraine and Russia before their conflict? Has right. it always been good or? Well, <clears throat> uh, Russia for one is, uh, of course, Russia is major power, yes. right? It's we have superpower, superpower yeah. like uh, United States, China, and Russia is one among the uh, major powers. Yes. And then uh, Russia is one of the dialogue partners of ASEAN. And uh, ASEAN is very important for Indonesia. And uh, Russia has been helping ASEAN ASEAN has been uh, proposing a deeper and more meaningful relations with uh, Russia and that <coughs> would eventually also help Indonesia. If uh, ASEAN relation with Russia is good, uh, that would hopefully benefit Indonesia uh, as well. Okay. So in terms of uh, relations with Russia, I think uh, we are doing okay. You know, okay. Uh, not to mention, you know, there were in the past uh, some kind of uh, purchasing of uh, weaponry system oh. from Russia and so on and so forth. So I think uh, we do not really have problem with 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 Russia. Right? Ukraine. Ukraine is interesting. Uh, maybe not many Indonesian knew that Ukraine was among the first who helped Indonesia's independence. Uh, Ukraine was the one who who brought uh, the Indonesian case to the UN Security Council back in 1946. And then the, in that forum, Ukraine condemned the Dutch for colonizing Indonesia. And uh, Ukraine was helping the cause of free and independent Indonesia. So there is this historical ties between the Indonesia and, 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 and Ukraine. Uh, so uh, we are having good relations with Russia and we are having good relations with Ukraine. That's uh, uh, the nature of 
uh, relations uh, between Indonesia and Russia and Ukraine as well. But I think I need to emphasize that one of the basic uh, principles of Indonesia's foreign policy is we never tolerate the <coughs> uh, the attack on sovereignty. Okay. And that we can argue what is the definition of the sovereignty and so on and so forth, but Indonesia has never been tolerated because it's the basic principle of international relations that we protect sovereignty of a country, especially, you know, not, uh, we are countries that uh, was coming out of colonization and so on. So for us, sovereignty, territorial integrity uh, are two, uh, you know, uh, ultimate uh, objective of our foreign policy. So seeing a country just got into another country where, yeah. you know, like what, uh, you know, what we've seen yeah. in, 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 in Ukraine. Uh, of course, something that uh, we need to be worried about because it would create precedent about <coughs> uh, invasion of uh, territorial integrity and stuff. Okay. Of course, people might debate, you know, uh, you know, about all this. But uh, what Indonesia has been uh, doing and has been trying to uh, maintain this principle of international relation uh, sovereignty uh, uh, is is something that has been uh, you know in the DNA of our uh, uh, foreign policy. And uh, uh, but that doesn't mean we neglect relations with Russia uh, because uh, what Pak Jokowi, uh, our president. <coughs> did in uh, Kiev and in Ukraine and in Russia uh, actually trying them, you know, uh, to find a uh, peaceful solution uh, at least uh, to find uh, a way to find a, a, long, a, a longer uh, lasting uh, uh, solution to, to the problem between especially Russia and Ukraine. Okay, so let's hope like, the situation in Ukraine it would get better uh, uh, in the future and I think uh, thank you so much for your time Dr. Vermonte All right. and uh, we'll see you next time uh. and there you have it thank you all for watching and I hope Dr. Phillips answers and point of view could give you guys a clearer take on President Jokowi's encounter with the two world leaders follow our social media for more content like this and keep you guys updated for future videos of this series. My name is Rinaldi and catch you guys in the next episode of Vocal Lengths.